let's talk about splits for a second. So, five, one, ABC, Jan, 50 call, uh, three or two split. These are the hard ones, right? This is an odd split. This is an odd split. All right, so anytime, anytime you're adjusting for splits, the very first step, the very first step is to calculate the exercise value, which is the number of shares times the strike price, which in this case is 100 shares, right? One time for the 100 shares times 50, which equals $5,000. Okay, so then next step is to calculate the new number of shares. This is tricky. New number of shares. To calculate the new number of shares, you take the old number, which is 100 shares, and you multiply it by the first. This is, by the way, not only for options, but also regular stock splits to figure out the new number of shares after a split. To figure out the new number of shares, the trick is you always multiply by the first number of the split and you divide it by the second number of the split. So 100 shares times three divided by two, which is 150 shares. So you multiply it by the first number of the split and you divide it by the second number of the split. That's the trick. Sorry, I have a wobbly desk here. That's the trick to figure out the new number of shares. You multiply it by the first number, you divide it by the second. Now from there, what do we have to do? We got to figure out the new strike price, which is the exercise value divided by the new shares. So it's 5,000 divided by 150, which equals, nope, that's not right, which equals 33, 33, $33.33. So now what do we have? What's our new position? We have, whoops, I don't know what that was. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, we have one ABC Jan, 33, 33 call for 150 shares. So it's no longer, it's no longer, I know you all think, well, isn't an options contract always, always, always 100 shares? Not in this case, not after an odd split. You have a non-standardized contract size. That's okay, it happens, it happens. You don't have to do much math with it, but that's what happens here. So you'll notice the number of contracts is the same. So you figure out the exercise value first, First, you do the exercise value, then the new number of shares, and then the new strike price. It's always what you're going to do. Now, if it's an even split, if it's an even split, uh, yeah, somebody asked, couldn't you just multiply it by the flip here to get the price? You could, but I like this. I like this. So I'm not going to go through that example because I prefer that you do it like this. If it works for you, that's fine. I'm not going to repeat it because um, I want you to do it this way. All right. So let's say uh, you have the same example. You have this one again. Oops. I don't know what happened there. All right. So here, here, you pretty much do the same thing. So let's say you have a three for one split. So now the first step still is the exercise value. is going to be uh, 100 times 50 equals 5,000, right? So now you figure out the new number of contracts, which is one contract times three divided by one, right? You multiply by the first number of the split, you divide it by the second. So now we have three contracts, i.e. 300 shares, and three, is the new strike price is the exercise value of 5,000 divided by the new number of shares which is uh, 1667 so this now we have one uh, we have three ABC and 1667 calls. So it's the exact same thing. The only difference is 
I shouldn't say it's the exact same thing. It's almost the same thing. The only difference is that in the first one, step two, you're figuring out the number of shares. Step two, in the even split, you're figuring out the number of contracts. What makes it even versus odd? Uh, even split means it ends in one. Two for one, three for one, four for one, 10 for one, that would be pretty unusual.